can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. Before and it shows Roger Stone. This is on July 9th, 2020. This was recorded by Stone's assistant during COVID and provided to you. Here it is. What they're assuming is that the election will be normal. The election will not be normal. Oh, these are the California results? Sorry, we're not accepting them. We're challenging them in court. If the electors show up at the, at the Electoral College, armed guards will throw them out. I'm the president. F you. You're not stealing Florida. You're not stealing Ohio. I'm challenging all of it. And the judges we're going to are judges I appointed. F you. You're not stealing the election. That's what, that's basically what Bush did to Gore. So, it, you know, if they want to run a bunch of fake ballots, we'll have an investigation. We'll say, these ballots are fake. Yep. Your results are invalidated. Goodbye. That's the way it's going to have to work. Wow. It's, it's going to be really nasty. Wow. Be, be, but you cannot count on, we're not going to get an honest election. Right. So let's say that Trump is a little behind right now, which he probably is. That doesn't bother me. But even if he wins an honest election, we're not going to have an honest oh, election. God. They're going to steal it. They're still on this blind in Florida right now. So, well, you know, it's not the first time it's happened in this country. It happens around the world. Yeah. So he's going to have to he's going to have to fight for the presidency in the courts. Our next election will be decided in the courts wow. because they cheat and we don't cheat. Yeah. We've never cheated. I suspect it'll be I really do suspect it will still be up in the air. But when that happens, the key thing to do is to claim victory. Possession is nine tenths of the law. No, we won. You. Sorry, over. We won. Yeah. Yeah. You're wrong. Thank you. ABC. <laughs> We will have really great, strong people. I already know who they are, but we will have really great, strong people. Okay, your vice president, Mike Pence, is running against you. Yeah. Your ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned national security advisor, John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr, uh, says you shouldn't be president again. Uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, Barr, a, a gutless pig. Uh, your second defense secretary is not supporting you, called you irresponsible. This week, you and your White House called your White House chief of staff, John Kelly, weak and ineffective and born with a very small brain. You called your acting White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, a born loser. You called your first secretary of state, Rex Tillerson, dumb as a rock. And your first defense secretary, James Mattis, the world's most overrated general. You called your White House press secretary, Kayla Kennedy, milk toast. And multiple times, you've referred to your transportation secretary, Elaine Chow as Mitch McConnell's China loving wife. So why did you hire all of them in the first place? Um, you know, either he's a liar or, or, or he's stupid because he said in an interview yesterday that he never trusted me. Uh, well, he offered me White House chief of staff. So either he's a liar that he never trusted me or anybody who would offer White House chief of staff to somebody who they don't trust is stupid. But one or the other, these are issues of character. We will have really great, strong people. I already know who they are, but we will have really great, strong people. Okay, your vice president, Mike Pence, is running against you. Yeah. Your ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned national security advisor, John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr, uh, says you shouldn't be president again. Uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, Barr, a, a gutless pig. Uh, your second defense secretary is not supporting you, called you irresponsible. This week, you and your White House called your White House chief of staff, John Kelly, weak and ineffective and born with a very small brain. You called your acting White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, a born loser. You called your first secretary of state, Rex Tillerson, dumb as a rock. And your first defense secretary, James Mattis, the world's most overrated general. You called your White House press secretary, Kayla Kennedy, milk toast. And multiple times, you've referred to your transportation secretary, Elaine Chow as Mitch McConnell's China loving wife. So why did you hire all of them in the first place? Um, you know, either he's a liar or, or, or he's stupid because he said in an interview yesterday that he never trusted me. Uh, well, he offered me White House chief of staff. So either he's a liar that he never trusted me or anybody who would offer White House chief of staff to somebody who they don't trust is stupid. But one or the other, these are issues of character. Bad, I dis so I say it, it's fake. <laughs> if it's good, I say that's the most accurate poll perhaps ever. Taken. Are you ready? 
Are you ready? Food for everyone. Food for On Tuesday, shortly after he was charged with 37 federal criminal counts, Donald Trump visited the Cuban restaurant Cafe Versailles in Miami. It's an iconic restaurant where politicians love to stop for photo ops. And while he was there, Trump promised to buy food for everyone. It was an unusually generous offer from Trump, who is not exactly known to have Santa-like instincts for giving. And so everyone cheered, and there were presumably warm feelings in the room, and yay, free cafecitos for everyone. Except no one got anything. The Miami New Times quotes a knowledgeable source who said that Donald Trump's stop at Versailles totaled about 10 minutes, leaving no time for anyone to eat anything, much less place an order. A lot of really creepy statements, uh, actions for sure, but statements that he's made in the past that make me very uncomfortable, um, certainly as a mother, but as a person who breathes air. You're going up the escalator? I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Really creepy statements. If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know? <laughs> Stop it. Oh, it's so weird. Stop You know what? You are us. Yeah. yeah. It makes me very uncomfortable that he would look at certain other Americans the way he apparently has in the past. What does Tiffany have of mom? She's got Marla's legs. Maybe. I don't know whether or not she's got this part yet, but time will <laughs> What's the favorite thing you have in common with your father? Either real estate or golf. Donald, with your daughter? Well, I was going to say sex, but I can't relate that. He's definitely not a typical father. Of any of the things that he's been indicted for, is there anything that would disqualify him from your vote? Mm. No, because I mean, he ain't the first one. Look at Clinton, you know, uh, look at Biden taking money from other countries. But in fairness, none of them have been indicted. We've never had a president indicted. Now that he's been indicted, is there anything that makes you feel like, uh, well, maybe he's not the right person? No, sir. No, sir. Is there anything you could imagine him doing that would disqualify him from your vote? No, sir. Not at right, not right offhand, I want to think of right now. We had somebody earlier tell us that if he was, if Trump was standing on the steps of the White House and murdered someone, he'd still vote for him. Same with you? Mm-hmm. How come? I don't know. I like Trump. He just got something about him. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Look, you know Donald Trump. Is it plausible Trump was showing classified documents to people in private meetings? The short answer is yes. I watched him show uh, documents to people at Mar-a-Lago on the, uh, the dining room patio. So he has no respect for classified information, never did. Um, you know, listening to that exchange every time, it just makes me so angry. Uh, he, he talks specifically that he should have de declassified it, but he didn't. So there, I think, is proof. I believe also there's a portion of that audio where he says, you know, this is off the record. And I know Donald mm -hmm. Trump. And knows the rules of reporters and he knows if it needs to be off the record that they can't talk about it. So I think he was covering himself in that regard. And, you know, I was thinking about this earlier. I just want to say to your viewers, I don't think people understand how hard it is to get your um, your classified uh, permissions. I, I remember when I was going through it to get get all of mine, I got held up because of a $13 kinder care a bill that I did not know about. And so I couldn't get clearance. What? It went, they go through everything about you. It's very difficult to get a security clearance. And I think people, you know, they miss that's in the weeds, obviously, but to be showing it to people who haven't gone through the extreme vetting that you go through to get a clearance, it's, you know, it's a disservice to the country, but it also puts people in danger potentially. How high was your security clearance? And I, I've got to think, given that you get held up for a $13 whatever it was, I mean, that's got to be almost offensive that Donald Trump goes around and shows it very liberally to people. 
It is. And it's, you know, of course, it's offensive to me. Sure. But again, there are sources and methods out there that could be put in danger. I think that, you know, I can't stress enough how by being so loose with this stuff, he's he's potentially putting people in danger. Um, and yeah, I had a top security clearance and it's it's very, very hard to attain. So um, it's very important and it's vital to our country and our national security that only people with these clearances have access to any of these documents. OK, well, Donald Trump, uh, having been called out on this behavior, is defending the audio recording we just played. He's calling it bravado. Take a listen to what he said. I had a whole desk full of lots of papers and mostly newspaper articles, copies of magazines, copies of different plans, copies of stories having to do with many, many subjects. And what was said was absolutely fine and very, very perfectly. We did nothing wrong. This is a whole hoax. So how do you interpret his defense compared to the audio we heard? Well, I mean, I think this is like his seventh or eighth defense, right? First, there was nothing. And then it was all declassified anyway. And then, you know, so this is just the newest defense. And it doesn't it doesn't comport with what the audio says. He says this, the military put this together for me. See this, you hear the papers. So that's not bravado. You can't tell me that he's holding up a newspaper while he's saying the military put this together for me. OK, let me ask you for a quick answer on this. You know, former Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani has been interviewed by federal investigators as part of the special counsel's investigation into the efforts to overturn the 2020 election. They've also interviewed Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger this week. What does this mean for Trump? Do you think he should be bracing for another indictment? Yes, that's that's my quick answer. Yes, I do think he should be bracing. For what we are really dealing with here and uncovering more by the day is the massive influence of communist money through Venezuela, Cuba, and likely China in the interference with our elections here in the United States. The Dominion voting systems, the Smartmatic technology software, and the software that goes in other computerized voting systems here as well, not just Dominion, were created in Venezuela at the direction of Hugo Chavez. There's virtually no doubt that FBI Director Comey and the great, great special agents of the FBI will be able to collect more than enough evidence to garner indictments against Hillary Clinton and her inner circle, despite her efforts to disparage them and to discredit them. If she were to win this election, it would create an unprecedented constitutional crisis. In that situation, we could very well have a sitting president under felony indictment and ultimately a criminal trial. You know, every time Donald thinks things are not going in his direction, he claims whatever it is is rigged against him. Uh, the FBI conducted a year-long investigation into my emails. They concluded there was no case. He said the FBI was rigged. He lost the Iowa caucus. He lost the Wisconsin primary. He said the Republican primary was rigged against him. Then Trump University gets sued for fraud and racketeering. He claims the court system and the federal judge is rigged against him. Uh, there was even a time when he didn't get an Emmy for his TV program three years in a row, and he started tweeting that the Emmys were rigged against him. Should have gotten it. This, <laughs> this is a mindset. This is, this is how Donald thinks. And it's funny, but it's also really troubling. Okay. You know, that is not the way our democracy works. We've been around for 240 years. We've had free and fair elections. We've accepted the outcomes when we may not have liked them. And that is what must be expected of anyone standing on a debate stage during a general election. White House, and that is, they've got some pretty good numbers going on. Right. Uh, the jobs number is expected to come out a little later on today. It's expected to be about 250, 225,000. Unemployment is expected to drop down to 3.6 percent. Yesterday, there was a blowout number. ADP said that a, about a half a million jobs were added in June. The construction sector itself added 97,000 jobs. In the, this is this is not Steve Ducey making stuff up. It's just not the place you would normally hear it. In June, that's the biggest increase month over month 
in a decade. So they've got these pretty good numbers, but the White House is stuck with a couple of people who are having a problem selling it because people don't feel like things are very good. Now, uh, and the... He's very credible, and the people on MSNBC who made fun of me when I said uh, we had an informant that was missing, they should feel like fools right now. Uh, and this is their worst nightmare because, uh, again, this is a credible witness. Gal Luft is charged with acting as an unregistered foreign agent, trafficking in arms, violating U.S. sanctions against Iran, and making false statements to federal agents. The GOJ stated the, that he, quote, subverted foreign agent registration laws in the U.S. to seek to promote Chinese policies by acting through a former high-ranking U.S. government official. He acted as a broker in deals for dangerous weapons and Iranian oil, and he told multiple lies about his crimes to law enforcement. I have watched or read the transcript of every single Donald Trump speech since late 2016, and I have never seen him be as thoroughly dishonest as he has been in the days since Election Day. It is not an exaggeration to say that almost every single thing Trump has said about the election and about the vote count has been wrong. Many of them have been egregious lies. And this is a case where they're trying to steal an election. They're trying to rig an election. No, just no, this is not happening. There is no grand conspiracy. There is no evidence for claims of election rigging. Rig an election. No, just no. From his aides to the 2020 presidential election, CIA director Gina Haspel flies to Frankfurt, Germany on a secret mission to secure computer servers that contain evidence that the election has been manipulated. These servers, owned by a bankrupt Spanish company called Skydal, could prove that the election was rigged for Joe Biden. Haspel and a team of special forces troops descend on Frankfurt to destroy the evidence. But in the raid, five troops and a CIA official are killed. Haspel herself is injured, flown to Guantanamo Bay, and given a tribunal for treason. In 2009, Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez creates a voting system that could change votes in elections in any country using this advanced technology. One of the technology companies that uses it is called Smartmatic, which supplies voting equipment to a single U.S. county in the 2020 election. The scheme between Smartmatic and Hugo Chavez is a secret and successful effort to rig the election for Joe Biden, even though Chavez has been dead for seven years. Pescara, Italy. A rogue employee at the defense and aerospace company Leonardo Spa hacks into military satellites to change the margin of victory in U.S. states where Trump has beaten Biden. It's a veritable coup d'etat, and it would go down as the most extraordinary effort in history to overturn a presidential election. Oh, you know what? That one actually sounds pretty fun. Italian military satellites? <laughs> Mamma mia! These sound great! Lyndon B. Johnson is very similar to Joe Biden. His big socialist programs were the Great Society. The Great Society were big government programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, and welfare, the Office of Economic Opportunity, and big labor and labor unions. Now, LBJ had the Great Society, but Joe Biden had Build Back Better, and he still is working on it. The largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started, that LBJ expanded on, and Joe Biden is attempting to complete. How quickly and what would you do to get this economy turned around? It'll go so quickly. Number one, I'm closing that border like I had it. We had the best border. Ever. And by the way, I think you all agree. I think you all agree. 
We want people to come into our country, but we want them to come in legally. We had a good system. They were taking tests. We want people that love our, co our country, not people that want to blow up our shopping centers and our farms. Uh, this was a pivot point for the country as you, as you, as you came out of the room. What, what do you hope your testimony accomplished? Well, I, I hope my testimony gets the facts, uh, you know, as they are and helps to continue to paint a real and honest picture. But, but politically speaking, this is a pivot point for this country to do something more than just stew on the, on, on the 2020 election cycle, right? We're either going to, as Republicans, take our medicine and realize the election wasn't rigged. Donald Trump was the worst candidate ever in the history of the party, even worse than Herschel Walker. And now we're going to have to pivot from there, right? We want to win an election in 2024. It's going to have to be somebody other than Donald Trump if we do it. So politically speaking, this is an important pivot point for our party, right? To go focus on the things that matter, to take this conversation to America, not to Twitter, not to 10 second sound bites, not to YouTube clips. This is taking this to the kitchen table. I think most Americans care about the economy. I think most Americans care about a porous border. I think most Americans care about national security and public safety. These are issues that we win as, as a republic. As long as we make this about the, the three ring circus called Donald Trump, we're gonna lose every time. And you don't have to go any further than Georgia to see that play out. And they're taking our appliances away. Well, they're they're taking our sh big showers, thing. heaters. I, yeah. it, it's, it's all in the name of climate change. Yeah. Which, so you remember when we were having a discussion about it, they sell, if you buy a new house, you have water that doesn't even come out. Even if you're in an area that most of the country has plenty of water, called rain from heaven, you know, it comes right from heaven. Beautiful rain, you don't know what to do. Some places have so much you don't know what to do. And yet they have restrictors on the showers mm -hmm. and the sinks mm -hmm. and on washing machines where they don't give enough any water. They're giving like this much water. They show me in a glass, they would come to complain about it. And I totally freed it up. Washing machines, dishwashers. Dishwashers, they give you this much water. Mm -hmm. And the guy's explaining it from different companies in Ohio, which have become very successful because of what we do. She took money for helping to get nuclear material into Russia. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The foundation is the racketeering enterprise. It's a racketeering enterprise. The RICO statute. I was the first one to use the racketeering statute for public corruption. I did it against most of Ed Koch's administration. <laughs> That's well, Ed wasn't paying attention. Well, they were stealing millions. So, there we have Hillary. You can't vote for her. You can't. I mean, you just can't. You can't put a criminal on the White House. You can't do it. And now we have Donald Trump. It's supposed to keep our secrets secure, not show our secrets off. He's in the papers. Yeah. This was done by the military, given to me. Yeah. See, as president, I couldn't be classified. Yeah. Uh, now I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now, now. It's so cool. I'm Mike Hayden. I was the director of the CIA and NSA. Donald Trump has been indicted. He mishandled classified information. He had many top secret documents at Mar-a-Lago for more than a year. We don't know who saw them, but we have to assume those documents were compromised. And we have to assume that our enemies know about them. Former President Trump makes our country less safe. I was 40 years in intelligence and I've never seen anything like this before. Trump must face consequences for his actions. The consequences will be really important. working closely together on the coronavirus outbreak in China. My administration will take all necessary steps to safeguard our citizens from this threat. Now, the virus that we're talking about having to do, you know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat. Because of all we've done, the risk 
to the American people remains very low. People die from the flu, and this is very unusual. And it is a little bit different, but in some ways it's easier, and in some ways it's a little bit tougher. Uh, but uh, we have it so well under control. I mean, view this the same as the flu. When somebody sneezes, I mean, I try and bail out as much as possible. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Yes. And from our shores, we've, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. Nobody really knows. The fact is, the greatest experts I've spoken to all, nobody really knows. We're ordering a lot of supplies. We're ordering a lot of, uh, a lot of elements that, frankly, we wouldn't be ordering unless it was something like this. But we're ordering a lot of different uh, elements of medical. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. And this is their new hoax. If you're healthy, uh, you will probably uh, go through a process and, and you'll be fine. You take a, a solid flu vaccine, you don't think that would have an impact or much of an impact on corona? No. no he's asking the question, when is it going to be deployable? And that is going to be at the earliest a year to a year and a half, no matter how fast you go. I think that's right. And as you said, yes. treatment is going to be available before yeah, the vaccine. Before vaccine. vaccine. That's that's well, I, I think treatment in many ways might be more exciting. If, you know, we have thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that get better just by you know, sitting around and even going to work. Some of them go to work. Unclear what the joint venture is or was. Uh, and if it was just for Biden corruption, then why did they have other entities? Like uh, they had, they mentioned Hudson and some other partners as well. If it was just to influence a former vice president, which I don't know if that's illegal, uh, why exactly were there so many other moving parts? And what the Republicans don't do here yet is they don't say uh, if any laws were broken and if anything was illegal. American flag today flies over a nation divided. A nation where hatred and violence makes a mockery of the sacrifices of generations. A nation where one party storms the Capitol in a violent attempt to overthrow a free and fair election. A nation where one party claims ownership of the flag and the very idea of patriotism. It's time to fight back, to take back the flag from those who dishonor it. The symbols of our republic, this bold experiment that has struggled and bled to bend the arc of history, don't belong to the Republican Party. They don't belong to Donald Trump or Fox News or violent terrorists. The flag belongs to every American. It's not their flag. It's not his flag. It's our flag.